Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie, if you're new here, Julie JulieXFit on Instagram. Long time no see YouTube, but I'm coming back. I'm planning to do informative videos for you guys, so this is gonna be like your one-stop shop for any fitness questions you have, nutrition, health, anything like that. I just feel like on YouTube I can go more in depth than on Instagram sometimes. For example, today we're talking all about cutting what to do when cutting, how to go about cutting, what is cutting, all the questions, okay? I'm going through a cut myself, so I'm gonna kinda walk you through the steps that I'm taking, the protocols and stuff that I put my clients on as well. If you guys can do me a big favor, like this video, subscribe if you are new here, and leave a bunch of comments down below of videos that you wanna see next. If you wanna do like a bulk, if you are wondering more about reverse dieting, we'll touch a little bit about that today. Workout splits, literally anything. I'd love to make a video on it to help you guys and kinda just simplify fitness because I feel like there are so many dang explanations out there. I want this to be your one place that you can come to safely and trust the information that I'm giving you. Just go about fitness and living a healthy lifestyle in a much simpler way and stop overcomplicating it because it doesn't need to be complicated, okay? This is fun. This is fun stuff, okay? Let's get right into it. Cutting. What is cutting? Let's step away from food for a second and talk about money. And you have $300 in your bank account, but you spend $400, what happens? you're in debt, right? Okay. So basically when you are eating less than you are burning, you are in a deficit. You are in debt. When you are in debt in your body, your body, instead of using that fuel that you're feeding it, it's going to use the fat and basically what it already has on your body as fuel. It's when fat loss starts to happen. In men's terms, eating less than you are burning, therefore losing weight slash losing fat. You need a calorie deficit. This is a question I get asked all the time. If you are eating anywhere from like less than 1700 calories right now, I would say you would have to reverse diet first, which means slowly increasing your intake. Because for example, if you're eating like 1500 calories and you go into a deficit, and a deficit can be anywhere from like 300, 500 calories, you're eating only a thousand calories, which is not safe and we do not want you to do that. How to know how much you're eating right now if you don't track? What I would do is do a week of test tracking, seven days, track exactly what you're eating right now, whether that's alcohol, oils that you use, you know, the few chips, the handful of chips that you grab, anything that you put into your mouth, I want you to just track it as normal so then you can take that week and then take an average of that number. So say you did the week of tracking and your average came out to be 1500 calories, not gonna put you in a deficit. We would put you into a reverse diet and get your calories up to maybe 18, 2000 calories first by increasing slowly each week, then put you in a deficit from there so we don't put you in an unsafe place of eating like a thousand calories. Fun fact toddlers, toddlers, okay, like two year olds, their caloric intake is supposed to be 1200 to 1400 calories. So you, should not be eating 1200 to 1400 calories, okay? So if you want more info about reverse dieting, definitely ask me questions below and I can make a video all about that. But say you're on the other end of things and you know, you did that week of tracking and your intake is 1800 plus calories. Maybe like some days you're eating 3000 calories, 2400, whatever you're more in a position to be able to go into a cutting phase. Once you take the average, say your average came out to be 2300, what I would do would be subtract 300 to 500 calories from that 2300. Now this is where it can be kind of fun and up to you of how aggressive you wanna go into that cut. If you're like, ooh, I wanna lose weight fast, like maybe one pound per week, 500 calorie deficit. I wouldn't go past that 500 mark, okay? Because we don't want to slow down your metabolism. I can also talk more about that next, in the next video, but cap it at 500. So 1800 calories would be the least you would eat. Or if you're looking for more sustainable fat loss and trying to like keep your muscle, maybe subtract 200 at first and see how, where that takes you. From there, that is when you're gonna be in debt, okay? Your body's gonna be in debt and it's gonna start using your fat as fuel and you're gonna start losing fat. Now we explained what a calorie deficit is, who should be in a calorie deficit, and how to be in a calorie deficit. The food is important, 
but I want to talk to you guys about 10 things that I think people overlook once they get into deficits. I think they put way too much focus on the food that they're eating and not enough focus on all these other aspects, so I want to make sure that you guys have these in check. These are tips to keep in mind. There's no specific order to them. I just think that they're important for me because when I have these things down, my calorie deficit goes a lot smoother than if I was just focusing on my food intake. Number one is going to be your fiber intake. I think this is overlooked, okay? If you are a woman, I want you to be eating 25 to 35 grams of fiber per day. Where do you get fiber from? Whole foods, vegetables, oatmeals, things like this. Green, leafy greens. Add them to your diet and make sure that fiber intake's on point because once your fiber's on point, your digestion's gonna be on point, your bloating is gonna go down, and your internal processes are gonna work a lot better. Remember, when you are in a calorie deficit, your body does not like you. Your body likes to be in homeostasis, which means that your body likes to be eating at maintenance level. So if you are at that 2300 calories and you're eating at 1800, your body's not really gonna like you. You're gonna be a little tired, a little lethargic, which is normal when being in a deficit. These are the things that we have to pay the price for when we wanna lose a little bit of body fat, a little energy drop, but that's fine. Let's just make sure all these factors are okay so our body doesn't hate us. It just dislikes us a little, but it doesn't hate us, okay? Number two is gonna be having a step goal. You're training, you're going to the gym once a day for an hour, cool. What do you do for the other 23 hours in the day? Do you sit on your butt? Are you an active couch potato? We don't want that. I want you guys to open your Apple phone, your phone, whatever, and there's a little help app with a heart. If you don't have an Apple phone, I am sorry, I don't know what the Android users use, Samsung, I don't know, but if you are an Apple user, go to that little free heart app, and I want you to see what your average step goal is. It's free. Everyone has it. So say your average step goal is around 5,000 for the past week. When you enter a calorie deficit, something smart would be increasing your step goal by 2,000. Instead of hitting your 5,000, hit five to 7,000 and kind of work your way up to that 10,000 point. I think 10,000 steps a day is something universal that everyone should be doing. However, it could be a little scary if you're only walking 5,000 steps a day to just jump to that 10,000. So again, little incremental changes to help you get there. We do not want to be active couch potatoes, go to the gym for an hour, and then sit on our booties all 23 other hours of the day, okay? So keep this in mind when you are thinking about a deficit, or even if you're just maintaining, 10,000 steps I think is something that, again, everyone should be doing so you make sure that you are active. We're supposed to be active beings. We're not meant to sit at a desk all day. Now, I want to talk about sleep. Sleep is going to be very important. When we're sleeping, we're burning fat. We are recovering. We are replenishing our muscles. A lot of processes are going on without our knowledge. It's important that we get the correct amount of sleep. How much should you be sleeping? I always say seven to eight hours is perfect. The way that I like to do this is if I know I have to wake up at six, I work the clock backwards. So if I need to wake up at six, in order to get eight hours of sleep, I need to be asleep by 10. In order for me to be asleep by 10, I need to be in bed by nine reading my book. So I would recommend doing this for yourself and trying to get that seven to eight hours per night because when we don't sleep enough, we don't perform good in the gym. Also, Something that happens to me and a lot of other people is if you get a little sleep, you're hungrier throughout the day because your body's mad at you, so it's gonna make you hungrier. We wanna be on our body's good side. Number four is gonna be stress levels. I know, I know this is hard. I am a stressed out person, you're a stressed out person, I don't know what we can do to fix this, this universe, but let's try to take control of our stress levels. I think what helps me with my stress the most is one, having a morning routine to having a nighttime routine, which are just moments for myself to set up my day. If I wake up in the morning and I'm immediately serving others and I'm like, I wake up, just put my outfit on and go to work or something like that, I would hate that. I would literally hate that. I wake up an hour earlier from any obligation that I have and I have time to journal, to make myself a nice breakfast, to have a coffee, to brush my teeth, to do my makeup, to make myself feel good. And that like really sets me up for a not stressful day. Find different ways to help you manage your stress. CBD is an option number five cardio and weights so you're training when it comes to cardio I 
would not add any cardio at first. I wouldn't do it. When you first are in a deficit the first few weeks, I would not do any cardio. I would stick to your weight training and then, you know, a few weeks in, add 20 minute sessions and then a few weeks later you can do three 20 minute sessions and then a few weeks later you can do three 30 minute sessions and then I would probably cap it there. I really want to focus on your weight training because remember when you're building muscle, increasing your metabolism. So the more muscle we have, the more fat we burn on a day to day doing absolutely nothing. You want to make sure that you're building that muscle and cardio can hurt the growth of your muscle. When it comes to weights, I think training at most five times per week I would probably cap it at five times per week. You wanna have two rest days. The theme of calorie deficits is not being in a stressed state because your body will not let go of the fat if it is in a stressed state, okay? Number six is the scale. I know some people hate the scale. I know, I know, I know. But I think my relationship with the scale became the best, and some people are gonna hate this, when I started weighing myself every day. Because I learned how much my weight fluctuates. When I'm on my period, sometimes I'm like plus minus five pounds, 10 pounds. The water retention is real on my period days, which is fine. For example, I can wake up one morning after having popcorn the night before, which was super salty and be like three pounds up. But now, since I weigh myself every day, I know it's not fat. I know the next day I'll be fine. I just know it's water retention. So then I don't have that attachment to the scale anymore but I think it's a good thing because I can take a weekly average if I'm in a cut and make sure that I'm on track of losing 0.5 to one pound per week. So that's kind of what you want to look for. If you have a terrible relationship with your, the scale and it makes you like mentally not good, I would just get rid of the scale and take weekly progress pictures. I do my progress pictures and the scale. In the pictures, I can see change as well. So, you know, the scale might go up one day, like five pounds with water retention, but my photos could look completely different. And I could like, you know, being a snatch fit queen in my photos. Number seven, peri workout nutrition. What you eat before your workout and what you eat after your workout is super important to make sure that you get the most out of your workout. Pre-workout, I like to focus hard on carbs and protein. I will eat my pre-workout meal around 60 to 90 minutes before my workout. And then that looks for me something like cream of rice and cashew butter, it has a little protein in it, fat and carb, but it is mostly carb heavy. So then I have that fast digesting carb to use during my workout. And then post-workout, I let my body get into an unstressed state, so I wait about 30 to 45 minutes to eat my post-workout meal, and I focus on getting my protein in and another fast digesting carb. So I've been making protein pancakes, which are super delicious, with protein powder, banana, egg whites for some extra protein, and syrup. Really focusing on your peri-nutrition is important to make sure that you're fueled for your workout and fueling your body after your workout. I definitely wouldn't work out completely fasted. I think that we perform our best when we have fuel in our tank. Think about a car. A car is driving the car has no gas it doesn't really go far right if you fill up your tank you're gonna lift more and turn burn more fat okay eat before workout number eight is protein intake when you are in a calorie deficit and you drop your calories macros make up those calories right protein carb fat make up the calories what I would do is keep protein intake the same and drop the carbs and fats because you want to keep your protein intake up so you can keep all the muscle that you built okay so just drop the carbs and fats if you have more questions about this again you could either apply to one-on-one -on -one coaching below or ask me in the comments because i or dm me julia x fit <laughs> got you number nine is having free meals untracked meals not cheat days i do not like cheat days but i do like free meals once a week i have an untracked meal because it keeps my mental sanity very high this makes me happy so saturday night if i have a date night my love life is non-existent right now but say say someone asked me on a date and i end up going on the date with them then i would have an untracked meal or my mom and dad take me out to dinner which is more likely what's gonna happen i will have an untracked meal and nothing that's gonna happen but it's just gonna keep my mental sanity very high and something I can look forward to throughout the week. Again, it's not a cheat day, it's just that one meal. So I'll just like track as normal and eat my normal meals throughout the day. And then at night, if we're going out to dinner and I want some pizza, chicken parm, or if I want some sushi and froyo, I'll have it and I won't track it and I'll wake up the next day and just jump right back into normal. No regrets, no, no guilt, because I know that mentally stress levels will be way better if I have that untracked meal. Number 10, going back to the stress. Rest 
is so important. Rest in your workouts, rest outside of your workouts, rest when it comes to sleeping, all very important things. When I am working out my compound movements, I'm taking three to six minute rest, okay? Because I'm going heavy and I'm training hard. My accessory movements, 60 to 90 seconds, and then I do my next set. Rest number one is there. And then number two is again, having those rest days throughout the week, like making sure that I'm not training more than three days per week. I suppose this kind of correlates with number five, like the cardio and weights training, but it's so important that I'm gonna restate it, okay? I don't understand that people that are like, no days off, like what the fuck? Like, I need rest have a full on rest day like today is a wednesday and i'm taking a full rest day i am gonna hit my steps but i'm not gonna go lift some weights in the gym because my body needs to recover okay guys i hope that was helpful for you guys if you have any questions for the five millionth time please comment them down below with that being said i hope you guys have a lovely lovely day whatever time day it is wherever you are in the world just making the most of it i will talk to you guys next time this is so fun. I love talking to you guys on YouTube. Okay, I'm gonna go. Bye guys.